Meet two people who once suffered from severe aortic stenosis. Ron and Natalie benefited from a less invasive therapy called transcatheter aortic valve replacement, or TAVR. I'm Natalie. I like to stay active and I volunteer and I was frequently called the Energizer Bunny. My name is Ron. I've led a very uh, active life. You know, I, I played football in high school, college, and professionally, so, and I've been in shape all my life. Aortic stenosis is a disease of the heart valve. The heart valves are like doors in the heart. They open, they allow the blood to go one way, and then they close behind. The aortic valve is the last door in the heart before the blood goes out to the rest of the body. What happens in aortic stenosis is the valve slowly narrows down with calcium deposition and becomes restricted in opening. Patients with severe aortic stenosis could experience a variety of symptoms that may be confused with simply getting older. These can include fatigue or extreme tiredness, shortness of breath, chest pain, difficulty walking short distances, rapid heartbeat, swollen ankles and feet, and not engaging in the activities you used to enjoy. If you or a loved one are experiencing symptoms like these, talk to your doctor right away. Aortic stenosis is uh, diagnosed by an echocardiogram. An echocardiogram is an ultrasound of the heart. I knew some things were really going wrong because I was even getting out of breath when I would get dressed. Yeah, I so all of a sudden find myself um, running short of energy, not being able to do the things that I really wanted to do. I was never short of breath, just short of energy. I mean, it was uh, a, a very uncomfortable feeling. I thought, oh, it's my weight. Oh, I'm getting older. I called my primary care and she um, said, when was the last time I had an echocardiogram? And I said, last year sometime. So she looks on the computer screen and sees that it was 14 months earlier and that it was aortic stenosis. So when I got home, I got on the internet and I started doing some research about aortic stenosis and learning about the symptoms and, and, and solutions. And it found that aortic stenosis does not get better. It either stays the same or usually gets worse. It is a mechanical problem. You have to get the valve replaced. Well, it was disturbing that I had three echoes over a period of a year and a half, and it went from 20 years I'll need something to five years I'll need something to within a year I'll need something. Uh, something was happening and it was happening much, much too fast. Well, my cardiologist seemed to think that we had time before we even needed to talk about what could be done. Once you are symptomatic from your aortic stenosis, the clock is ticking, your chance of having sudden death is much higher once you're symptomatic. After the onset of symptoms, patients with severe aortic stenosis have a survival rate as low as 50% at two years without aortic valve replacement. Once you have severe aortic stenosis, you should act on it because the heart will weaken and it may cause permanent damage to the heart. I'm gonna be 80 and I'm gonna to have to have open heart surgery. I was terrified. If you or a loved one have severe aortic stenosis, it is important to know all available treatment options, including TAVR. Visit newheartvalve.com to find the closest TAVR hospital and talk to a valve clinic coordinator today. The only effective way to treat severe aortic stenosis is by replacing your aortic valve. The treatment options for aortic valve replacement are open heart surgery, or if you are at increased risk, transcatheter aortic valve replacement may be an option. In the past, we only had one option to treat aortic stenosis, which was open heart surgery. Fortunately, we now have a minimally invasive option for treating aortic stenosis, which is the transcatheter aortic valve replacement. Yeah, they said I had severe aortic stenosis and um, what the option was uh, the first one was the uh, surgical procedure, which I did not want to do, having had that surgery um, 10 years earlier uh, for a bypass. And then the other one was the TAVR. TAVR is a less invasive procedure for those at increased risk from open heart surgery. 
The TAFR procedure uses a catheter that is usually inserted through a small incision in the leg to implant a new valve within your diseased aortic valve. TAFR may be an option, depending on your risk for open heart surgery. There's no open heart surgery, we don't have to stop the heart, and we don't have to go on cardiopulmonary bypass to do this. My older daughter, she learned about the TAVR procedure and uh, decided that I needed to go somewhere where they had experience doing this. And I, I'm thankful that I had her to advocate for me. You know, I grew up in an, in a, an age where if the doctor says so, that's what it is. And it only goes to, to show that you really have to advocate somehow for yourself to get things done. She also went to explain the fact that there, there was a TAVR procedure, but she didn't think I was eligible, but she would be happy to refer me to the other uh, hospital that does do it. To be evaluated for all treatment options, you need to ensure you are being evaluated at a TAVR hospital. Not all hospitals perform TAVR. To find a TAVR hospital near you, log on to newheartvalve.com and click Find a TAVR Hospital or ask your doctor about a referral to a TAVR hospital. At a TAVR hospital, your central point of contact is the valve clinic coordinator. They will help guide you through the TAVR evaluation process. We'll do a lot of testing and you may have already had some of this done, but it is very important for us to have up-to-date tests, things change. A typical TAVR evaluation may include a physical examination and lab work, frailty assessment, carotid ultrasound, pulmonary function test, electrocardiogram, chest x-ray, echocardiogram, cardiac catheterization, and a CT scan. And that requires an IV contrast to look at your chest, abdomen, and pelvis so we can size the heart valve and look at your vessels. Before TAVR, you will need a dental clearance. We want to make sure that there are no active infections in your mouth. We have a team approach. You'll see interventional cardiologists, you'll see open heart surgeons, two of them, and we will all as a group help you determine what procedure is best for you, TAVA procedure or open heart surgery. The coordinator was wonderful because she told me exactly what to expect during the whole evaluation and what could happen. When she explained the TAVA procedure, she also explained that if I were not at high enough risk that I might have to undergo the open heart procedure. We contact the insurance companies, we get authorizations for all of the pre-testing that is required and for the actual TAVR procedure. As a valve clinic coordinator, I just want to let you know that our role is to be there for you. If you have any questions or concerns, let us know. On the day of your procedure, you'll come into the hospital and you'll check in the pre-registration department, and then they will escort you up to pre-op. When you're in the pre-op area, they will get you ready for the procedure. They'll put you in a gown, they start an IV, and they'll have you sign your consent forms. They did all the pre-op procedures that they needed to do. And the, the funny thing to me was, the pre-op procedures took longer than the procedure itself. You'll meet with the cardiologist or the surgeon and you will also meet with an anesthesiologist. As far as anesthesia goes, we can range from moderate anesthesia to general anesthesia. It's all based on the individual needs of the patient. Where the valve was not working properly, they opened it up, that was it. They just pushed it open. I never felt a thing. The average procedure takes about 45 minutes depending on the experience of the heart team and the patient's anatomy. The most serious risks associated with the TAVR procedure are a 1% risk of stroke, a 1.1% risk of death, and a 5% risk of major bleeding complications compared to surgery. For all risks associated with the TAVR procedure, please talk with your doctor. I'm Mary Rose, I'm a registered nurse and I care for patients after the TAVR procedure. When the patient's done with the TAVR procedure, they come up to my unit, I welcome them, I get them comfortable, and I monitor also their vital signs. I'm gonna monitor your blood pressure frequently, so if there's a blood pressure cuff, that will be squeezing your arm for the next few hours. Um, I'm also checking for circulation, and I'm also checking your incision sites. An hour later, after the procedure, uh, I come out of the uh, anesthetic completely, and I, I did a selfie with myself, thumbs up, 
uh, and I sent it to all my friends who were you know, concerned about me. We're going to advance your diet. We're going to make sure you're up and walking. You'll spend the night. The next day, you will get an ultrasound of your heart or an echocardiogram to ensure that the valve is working well. And if everything looks good and you're stable on your feet, you will be discharged home. So when you go home, I'm going to discuss your discharge instructions. We're going to go over activity restrictions. You're not going to be able to lift anything over five pounds for the next five to seven days. The valve clinic coordinator will call you within 24 hours after your discharge from the hospital to see how you're feeling, if you have any questions or concerns. You will have a one month echocardiogram to reassess the valve to make sure that everything is working well. The day and a half later, when uh, we were on our way home and we were at a rest stop and they were playing some music and I found myself dancing in the rest stop. It was a little embarrassing because my daughter caught me on, on video and of course she had to share that with the world. The follow-ups were pretty uh, simple and straightforward. They were thrilled with the procedure. Uh, not as thrilled as I was, but still they, they were very happy with the outcome. I mean, I was dancing and I wasn't out of breath. Before that, I was getting dressed and I was out of breath. I was happy as a clam. I felt wonderful. Uh, and it, it was like everything was working. I, I was feeling another energy. If I had talked to a Tavar patient before I had the procedure, it would have been uh, very helpful. Having been through the procedure and being able to help someone else who is about to have the procedure or has some questions or doubts about it, uh, all I can do is I can tell them what my experience has been. And I think my experience has been nothing but positive. Uh, like any trip, it's always nice having somebody holding your hand as you're going through it. TAVR ambassadors cannot offer medical advice. However, they are knowledgeable about the TAVR process from their own experiences. If you or a loved one would like to speak with a TAVR ambassador, please call 877-785-8714. It gives me great satisfaction, you know, in terms of working hard to make sure that patients get diagnosed and treated in a timely manner because I see the results on the other side and I see what kind of a meaningful impact I make in not only in the patient's life, but in their family's life. Next month I'm going to Florida and riding horses in two different areas. I mean, I cannot say enough about what I've been through uh, or what Tavar has given me. And just because I'm 80 years old doesn't mean I can't do it. And by the way, since I've had the Tavar, hey, I have my new part. I'm running around like a kid. I love it. Talk to your doctor today about Tavar and see if TAVR is right for you.